Um, so we can talk today on sort of the history of the development of Lua, uh, how we created the code itself and smart. So I'll do with it. So I'll show you to Roberto at a previous workshop uh, and expressed interest in seeing the actual code and the code history of the code um, of Lua. Um, and I looked through it, I found it really interesting. I, as I read through it, I sort of remembered lots of various mailing list threads across the years. Like, oh, he must have read that mailing list thread and gone ahead and did this bit. And, um, I wanted to share it with everyone in a more modern, digestible format than what Roberto, what Roberto had. Um, so I spent some time converting all the history into a Git repository. Or, in fact, it ended up being several. So, um, sorry, things did all the way. So, start Lua. Uh, 93 is Access to Sol, which was a data description language. Um, it was a PhD project at Walmart. I'm not sure if I can pronounce that correctly. Um, and it was supervised by Roberto. Uh, Luz talks out at various points um, as death. Um, so, the development model, all of Lua is done in private. Um, it's pretty much done on Roberto's uh, shell account, the server. Um, and no one gets to see what's happening. Uh, there's no release schedule. <laughs> no, one, no one knows when anything's going to come. Uh, and the public interaction with the team is pretty much by the mailing list. Um, so at least that's all public though, so we can go back and look at conversations in the past. Um, as patches are not usually accepted, they're rewritten um, before they make it in, and then you won't even know the commit that it was added in until now. Um, so before Git, there was Subversion. Before Subversion, there was CVS. Before CVS, there was RCS. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the Lua's team, team has been using RCS exclusively. Um, it wasn't used... Um, sorry? But you started using SCCS? Oh, you didn't see um, But it wasn't even used in the very beginning either. I think it was just originally straight around with copying and emails and probably, I don't know, copy disk or something. Um, which means that there is some history lost at the same time. We don't, early versions of Lua are no longer anywhere. They don't, they don't exist, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so, a bit about RCS. It's not a distributed uh, version control system. It's uh, not even a collaborative version control system. Um, Lua, work with Lua's code has generally not been very collaborative from what I've seen in the industry. Um, different people, um, I think most of the Roberto and Lua's have been assigned different areas to work on. Um, so I'll go through that a little bit more later. Um, but yeah, they, they all work on, in their, on their own repositories. Now, RCS only tracks individual files. It doesn't track directories, um, which means that if multiple files are changed together at once, you literally have one commit for each file. Uh, and also, there's no tracking of file deletion because <coughs> you're tracking a file at the time and you, just, and you don't want to delete the history, so it's like this weird tombstone. Um, usually, Roberto is pretty good at putting those tombstones in, but there's a couple of cases where the file was just never deleted. It just, I think it's probably even still sitting in for a working directory, but it's not in the releases. So it's trying to figure out when that really deleted got disappeared. Um, so there are multiple top-level repositories. Um, there's one on Lua, which is um, Lua's code up to, from 93 through about uh, August in 97, um, at which point um, Roberto started a, new, started a new directory and started copying over files without that history. Uh, and that's been used since, yeah, 97 until now. as some sort of a separate repository for Roberto, I guess. Um, the old Lua C, which is, Lua's did a similar thing, except up to 98 for Lua C. Now, Lua C is not in the Lua. So Lua C.C and Undump.C um, were not part of the Lua repository. They were later merged in. So, also get to that. And then there's new Lua C, which um, contains Lua C, Lua C code and lots of bytecode experiments. Um, sort of He's playing with the bytecode format, undumping it, um, serializing it in different ways, and there's lots of sort of experiments in there. Um, and that's maintained by Louis on his shell account. Uh, and then we've got tests maintained as a separate um, suite, although, and then we've got the manual as a separate thing as well. And it's in a custom format, I believe the dot .of is our format. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what, what do we think 
how the release looks like. Well, we've got all the stuff in the doc directory, uh, various uh, accessories required, so you've got the manual in HTML format, uh, you've got the man pages, um, you've got a couple of logos. Then in the source directory, we've got all things starting with L, generally the actual source files. Um, then we've got make files and then problem make file as well. Um, and readme. But how's all this made? We've got all these separate repositories, how do they come together? Well, manually, in other words, uh, copies in make file, readme, and the code folder from the previous release. Uh, if I have those not in version control at all. Uh, copies across the contents of the Lua repository to convert to the source directory. Copies across his version of the C and the current version of the man page for Lua C into the doc directory. Compiles the current version of the manual from our format uh, and that puts it into the doc directory. Uh, and that's sort of where, that's, that's how the sausage is made. Um, so, I will convert all this to Git so we can see the history without possibly through a more reasonable lens. Um, so, CVS is based on RCS. Um, it's the same file formats that CVS just makes RCS distributed, um, which means that all the, file, all the tools around for working with CVS repositories still work on RCS files as a group, um, which is what all the tools are using much CVS based ones. Um, when doing this, I wanted consistency. Um, so in between runs, I didn't want hashes in Git changing, um, especially so that I could get new um, code from Roberto and pull it in without um, you know, changing all the hashes and having to push out a completely new release. Um, so CVS Fast Export is a tool uh, that converts from uh, CVS or RCS a repository to a git fast import stream. Now, repo surgeon, why is that gone? Okay. Is a tool that works on fast import streams, it manipulates them in various ways, uh, and you can sort of strip out commits, add them in, do all sorts of little things to the fast import stream. Now, what is a git fast import stream? Uh, essentially, if you don't notice, there's a command in git, uh, git fast import. It uh, just reads in, you pipe it a long list of objects that include blocks, um, commits, sort of just various bits, uh, and it turns them into a Git repository. Uh, it's literally made so that tools originally converting from some version and such could relatively fast be turned into Git repositories. Um, so working on the fast import stream itself is a bit interesting. It is a plain text format, except for blogs. Um, so it's you can manipulate it a bit with set, uh, and I did have to at some points. Um, and in fact, I ran into several bugs in Repo Surgeon, um, and which I would frequently crash entirely with set fault. And um, yeah, so I did have to pretty much manipulate the stream with set uh, to work around the bugs in Repo Surgeon, so I could work on more, uh, which was a bit of a very annoying thing. Uh, however, about two weeks ago, there's a new Repo Surgeon release that has fixed most of my bugs. So I'm now, just this week, trying to convert back to, instead of my set stuff, and just use Reposurgeon without extra stuff. Um, other missed little things uh, is there's an author map file. And it maps from the username, which is what you see in RCS. Uh, it's just Roberto, what it is, and it's Celeste. Um, to what you'd expect, which is the name, the email, and the time zone, uh, because it does keep track of but the times are often in local time, uh, so it has to be able to convert those. So, first starting point, back in 2003, Louis managed to dig up an old release, I think from an email or something, um, where he sent around um, some code to someone that says, oh, here's a current snapshot of Lua, here's our work in progress. Um, you know, that was in 2003, that was released as a historical curiosity, um, and it's called the one word after the fact. Um, that gives us our starting point. That's the earliest known code of the world. Um, and it sort of works. Um, yeah. um, so I use that as my initial commit. Um, sorry. 
Uh, it's also very useful to have this because um, RCS tracks changes in files, um, which means that until a file was changed, it wasn't in the history. So I had to, using the um, 1.0 release, I could fill in the blanks until certain files were ever changed. Um, and it seems to be, it seems to work. Um, because other things might have happened in between there to change things and we don't know about them. Um, but that's the first thing to do. So, there's a few design decisions here about how to um, split this up into uh, Git repository. So, should the format match the releases? When we all see it, should it look like the lower release happened all the time? Um, the answer was no, because they'd be throwing that data. Um, Manual.out format is not maintained in HTML, it's maintained in something else. Um, and as well as a few other things like undone.c used to be auto generated um, from uh, other things. Uh, should I keep Lua C as a separate repository? Uh, unfortunately, I decided yes, uh, because otherwise the branches and tags don't actually match up with the releases. So they're tagged out at different points of like when 5.2 was versus 5.3 and, and the minor releases. Um, and then there's the division between the old repositories and the new repositories. That change over in 97 uh, is sort of very abrupt and confusing. So it's, should those be separate? And I answered, no. Um, they just need to be merged and gelled together to look like there wasn't two repositories. Um, and that was probably the hardest bit of this whole thing. It was merging those between the old and the new so that it didn't look weird. Um, so, some notable things. The first few commit messages are in Portuguese. They also are for the test repository. Um, yeah, that was started in about 2000. Um, you wrote a bugs file, uh, which contains all the bugs that you reported. He did a talk, I think, last year or the year before about how he tracks bugs and, and fixes them and uh, the testing framework that he built. So, that's an interesting one to probably watch if you can. And there's many lines of code. Oops, why is that not? <laughs> Many lines of code have remained unchanged for decades. Um, there's plenty of lines in there that have not changed since 2000 or, um, you know, or even earlier. Um, so, that's the one. <coughs> um, so, I'm just going to jump across now. I hope you can all see this. It's probably a little bit small. Um, so I've got, did anyone know the tool Tick? Uh, Tick is a tool, a command line UI for browsing Git repositories. Um, it's probably, instead of me sitting here typing Git blog and stuff, it's easier for me to just, just tick and show you what it looks like. Um, so we've got various directories here. We can pull our own source directory, which is probably the most interesting one. So we can actually, here is the history of Lua in Git format. Um, <coughs> So, firstly, commit by Roberto. <laughs> um, we've got tags for the various releases. Um, and if we go all the way back, you can see how everything's changed. Um, so, I don't know how I can, I don't know, I don't think you can probably read this very well. So, um, instead, after this workshop, I'm going to make the sources to this available to everyone, so we all finally have a public history of the code of Lua. Um, so, what that means is that it'll, I'm going to, for now I'm going to upload it on GitHub. Um, it'll be under the Lua organization, which we did manage to grasp. Um, so we do have that tag ha handle now. Um, and there's, a, there's already a repository there. Um, and a lot of people have blocked it to do power patches and such. Um, but I think it would be good if you do maintain a power patch or a fork of Lua, trying to rebase it on top of this Git history, because it does include everything. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you do maintain any forks, you can rebase on this, hopefully. Um, so. Oh, yeah, and I should say, that doesn't mean that the uh, 
actually with all the model of knowledge change, uh, early in Roberto will be committing things to their probably at the end of this. Um, but it does mean that we possibly get to see um, a lot more of how things have changed. Um, and I think uh, Roberto mentioned last night that he is considering uh, to actually develop in Git now instead of RCS. So um, that will be very interesting to see happen. <laughs> um, so, literally, so these, um, when I uploaded the talk, these are catalogs. Um, and most of the talks about Roberto have all called the evolution of law. Um, but there's like lots of them. So I've gone through that really quickly. Um, faster than I expected. I hope I didn't talk too fast because I often do. <laughs> so, um, questions on that? Uh, you mentioned that uh, you guys have not talked to about the collection of GitHub. Does that imply that you guys didn't have it previously? Just only no, so if someone um, previously just grabbed it um, and it's like, um, they had it for a few years, then Craig Barnes emailed them and said, hey, can I have it? And then Craig Barnes, um, I got in contact with him and, and um, said that I was looking at this with so uh, can we have it for actual like, the little team? And so now we've got it thanks to a couple of people in so it's quite a... <laughs> Here. I'm just curious, like how often have you received the RCS from upstream to so which repository? But there are several repositories. Yeah. I think I've only just I was working from the one um, dump for quite a while, and I just got one more recently um, to, to update it before the talk now. Um, but I, you know, so I don't know if we're going to start working in Git straight away because the will be able to final merge or you know some flow time. But because we do have the consistent hash, um, we'll actually just be able to put commits on top without changing either, either the underlying or old hashes. Sorry. Moving forward, how often will the public get the repository be updated? Only at release times or? Questions for better, not me. Sorry. I don't know, but his question is uh, how often will you send code up oh, to GitHub or will it only be a release yeah. time? So whenever I ask, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll set up the crunch and email every day. Oh, well, <laughs> so, so, I suppose as it happens, um, hopefully, maybe more often than previously, and maybe, hopefully, more often than releases. So, it seems like a significant question, right? Because, in a way, you were from Earth to Earth, you were able to be insulated with writing that word in the and then, rather than having a lot of, like, a peanut gallery commenting on everything. Yeah, <laughs> I found that very interesting thing that we mentioned before that um, he, doesn't, he didn't like sharing the history before because there were sort of dead ends and experiments uh, we're working on things and didn't want to give someone the idea of, oh, I'm going to go, oh, look, this is, this is uh, in the public head right now, I'm going to start programming this new feature coming out in the next version, then he just deletes it. Um, and he didn't want that liability of people using unstable code. Um, so that's something he mentioned. Yeah. 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 You don't have to push all your branches. Yeah, so that's why I like it. It's better at that than the previous. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. But, but then those dead end is like If only the stuff that stays in gets committed and, 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 and sent to the other branches. You can use your last name. You can use the linear locally. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the master Git repository will not be the one on GitHub, it will be the one on Roberto's computer, which is periodically synced. So think of it as a mirror that's occasionally updated than an actual master. Um, and on top of that, I should probably suggest that we hope no one tries to put up any issues of pull requests in on GitHub. Um, I know I'm turning off issues and off wiki and all those other things. Um, I'm just using it as a way to share a good repository. I should probably set up a proper self-hosted one. But um, I can chat to um, Daniel and stuff about that. You can set up uh, that. You can, uh, on the GitHub UI, show that it's just a mirror. Uh, you have to actually email GitHub to do that, so I could do oh. that. Um, but then they ask you to ask a mirror of what? And then if I say, oh, it's not public, then they go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, sorry. 
Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I just, just, this was silly, but have you looked at the activity charts? Uh, uh, yeah, I did, actually. So how green was it? Was it, was it um, every day? That, that's not every day. There, there are breaks. Um, in recent years, he hasn't committed very much in like January, February, December, I think. But that's even, it's even out by a previous year. It's where he did nothing during the year and then worked in summer. So. It's obvious, it's the Brazilian summer. <laughs> Nobody works in the Brazilian summer. <laughs> well, he used to. But anyway, it's changed. You, you'll see all that yourself when, you, when I um, upload this later. Um, so. I'm looking at the historical question since he said the earliest code available was 2003. No, so 2003, they found some code from 93. Okay, because I remember distinctly that in the late 90s, probably 99, 98, we had a product that had something like that in it. So, so it's not second available, but maybe through some of the first record. So the oldest one here is 93. Okay. 94 we were already there. 93 July is the that first commit that I used to face on. So but that's and then you found that in the yeah, and then 2003, uh, what actually? What's the most common curse Sorry. <laughs> I actually haven't done that. That's a good question. It's like git log dash p grab. No, never. <laughs>
um, repository at that point because they'll be developed, it could be developed as one if we can, if Rebecca feels like changing the development model. Yeah. Just also curious, like, have you tried to tag the various major releases? They're, 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 they're already got tags in our sense. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll see, for example, there, that's the platform tag. Um, yeah. You're going to consistently find that across the tests as well as you are seeing all the three. Yeah, tests. so I, I just left that as they already had it um, oh. with the existing tags that they had. Uh, I've sort of made a few where there's been some weird merges. Um, <coughs> so I've done some fixed ups, but that's it, this time.